So as we move into um, chapter two, section five, this is like measures of position. Um, so I'm going to focus on this example will be like working with quartiles, interquartile range and identifying any ladder, uh, outliers. So quartiles kinds of means we're going to be sorting the data into four, four regions, if you will. To do this, though, we have what's basically going to be, um, so we have like quartile one. So it's going to be like this Q1, Q2. The Q2 is also known as the median, the middle of the middle data. And then Q3 is going to be on the upper side of it all. The quartile range is basically going to be the middle. So what they do there is, the inter, and a lot of times they'll use the, the phrase IQR, interquartile range. The interquartile range is going to be basically the upper quartile, quartile three, subtract quartile one, and that'll give you your interquartile range. Identifying the outliers, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So I have the, these, um, this data that was given out, out of the book. So we just have, uh, I think, 15 pieces of data here. So what we do is we can put this into the calculator and kind of see what's going on. And what also I did is once I entered it into the calculator, I went on and sorted it. So see if I can kind of pull that up for us. Let me slide this over to the right. And go, that go away, possibly and bring this up. So I have the data in the calculator now, I believe. So I think, let's see if this is the right data. Yeah. So yeah, we have the data there. So notice that we have 51, 54, 56, 57. So notice that this data has now been sorted. So, you know, the median basically is kind of the, the middle here. So if I was doing the media, if there's 15 pieces, the median would be like between the seventh and the eighth piece. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the median is gonna be between the, the seventh and the eighth piece, okay? Now, instead of doing all that, what we can do is, um, and we can see that the middle of that's going to be 60. Instead of trying to do all that, we actually could just let the calculator identify the quartiles for us here. So let's see if we can just let the calculator do this. So under statistics, we're going to go to calculate, and we're just in one variable, so we're going to hit enter. And also, mine says L2 because I was messing with it. I need to change that back to L1 So because we're doing just list one. So make sure that's always the correct list. Everything else looks fine and it calculates. So remember X bar is the mean, not the median. So down here, you know, we have a minimum value, which is 51. Um, quartile one, they're saying it's 57. So this is where Q1 is, this is the 50, 57. And then the median is the 60, which we saw that already. Um, quartile three, they when I did that, that's a 63. So the 63 is gonna be our quartile three. And then, that thing we should see is our maximum value is 80. So the calculator actually can do all this. So remember quartile one, notice how it's a 57. That 57 is better than 25% of the data. So 25% of the data actually follows left to that. And 57 is 25% better than that. So quartile one kind of describes that. The quartile two, which is the 60, so this is quartile one. The quartile two, which is the, the 60, the 60 is um, better than 50% of the data. So sometimes they call these percentiles as well. So Q3, since we're talking quarters, the Q3, the, the 63 is going to be better than 75% of the data. So if we're talking percentile math. So quartile one, 25% of the data is under, so it's actually better than 25% of the data. The 60, 50% of the data is below it, so it's better than 50%. And the Q3, the 63 is actually 
better than 75%. So 75% of the data is underneath of it. So that's kind of what that means as well. So 25% of the data is going to be actually less than that because we're talking better than 50% of the data is going to be less than that as well. And 75% is, you know, it's going to be less than that as well. So we have that kind of going on there with those quartiles. So if I'm finding the quartiles, we have 57, 60, and um, 63. Now, if I want to find the interquartile, you know, all this is Q3 take away Q1. So Q3 take away Q1. And since this, we got these in front of us, we don't have to use any, and they're simple numbers, we don't have to go to that VARS menu. We can just use 63 take away 57. And we can just let the calculator worry about that. So if I can leave this for the time being, you know, we can go 63 take away 57. And that's going to give us then um, our six. So our interquartile, the IQR, the interquartile range is going to be this, this uh, six. Now, what they say is, you know, looking at the data, are there any outliers? So, you know, looking at the data, you know, nothing really looks really out there, you know, because the outliers are going to be on the ends and things. So if I'm looking at the left side, you know, is 51 an outlier? Well, there's a formula that says, um, let's see what, but bring that back up for myself here. Let me, let me pause it here and bring this formula up. Make sure I get that. Correct. So again, the outliers are going to be this the extreme points. So the question is, is 51 an outlier? Well, there's a form that says to test 51, you have to use Q1 to take away 1.5 of the uh, IQR, the interquartile range. And whatever that gives you, that tells you if anything is past that, then it's going to be um, an outlier. So from our, our data, we have, um, you know, 57 is our quartile one. If we subtract 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is the six, let's see what we actually come up with. So we have this 57 take away 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is six. That gives me a 48. So 48. So notice that you have to be less than 48 to be an outlier, to be an outlier. Well, the 51 is not less than 48. So 51 is not actually an outlier. So the thing is to test is the upper outlier, the 80. The 80 looks kind of suspicious to me. So I'd be kind of curious about that one. So to test to see if 80 is an outlier, again, we're going to use Q3 this time. If we add the 1.5 times the interquartile range, this is going to indicate whether the 80 is going to be an outlier or not. So the quartile three was 63. If we add to that 1.5 times six, let's see what that value is going to be. So using the calculator, we have 63 plus 1.5 times six. And that gives us a, a 72. So if you're greater than, if you're greater than 72, then you're going to be an outlier. So the question is, you know, up here was 51 less than 48? No, that was false. So it's not an outlier. But the question is, is 80 greater than 72? And it is, so that means 80 is actually an outlier. So we do have an outlier in this, this problem here. So that kind of gives you a little bit of background between um, what quartiles are and a little bit about the interquartile range and also how you can actually determine outliers.